Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Linwood. Whoever you are and wherever you are on your journey of faith, you're welcome in this place and you are welcome in the unconditional love of God. We pray that however you join us in worship, whether you join online or in person, you feel the presence of God as we worship together and as we continue this journey toward Easter. Do you ever feel like life is just too loud and a little too busy? In fact, we, um, you may not have noticed the fabric that sacred spaces have chosen to represent our current worship series, but it's called Modern Swirl. And they selected it because they thought it was a visual representation of how it feels sometimes in our minds and in our hearts. Like everything is just swirling. There are a lot of distractions in our lives. I know for me, I go to Google to email somebody, and an hour later, after checking all the emails and making some feeble attempt to organize everything, I cannot remember who I was supposed to email in the first place. There is no place that we can go, it seems, where we don't get that cheerful chime of a text message, an email, or a voicemail arriving. And sometimes we just have to turn it off. We just have to walk away from the modern swirl and slow down and listen to our own inner priorities. Be still and know that I am God. It's a promise as old as the Psalms, but it seems like it gets harder to find. Today we're going to consider all the distractions and the noise that keep us from healing, that keep us from choosing God. Today we're going to declare a fast from distraction and find the stillness that restores us. Let's see. time of worship. Quiet our busy minds. Bring peace to our anxious worry. Allow us for this hour to set aside all thoughts but one. Help us to focus on you. Make this hour beautiful with your presence. Make our lives beautiful with your grace. you to stand as you're willing and able as we join in the call to worship. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims God's handiwork. Each day pours forth speech, and night declares wisdom. The earth speaks no words, the heavens have no voice. Yet their proclamation goes out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. 
Let us stand silent before your creation and listen. Let us praise our God. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Let's continue in song. I invite you to take a deep breath in and feel the peace of Christ filling you in every way. And now turn to your neighbors in Christ and share that peace with one another. Peace be with you.
Please join with me in prayer. God of love, fountain of prayer, we confess that our silence is noisy, our minds filled with distracting chatter, our thoughts focused on problems, our eyes bombarded with temptation. How hard we find it to be still and rest in your holy healing presence. How hard we make it by driving ourselves to busyness and fatigue. God of love, usher us into your holy presence. Teach us the words to pray and the silences to keep. Refashion our days and hours so we may always walk in thankfulness for your amazing grace. Amen. Our scripture today comes from Proverbs chapter 17, verses 27 to 28. One who spares words is knowledgeable. One who is cool in spirit has understanding. Even fools who keep silent are considered wise. When they close their lips, they are deemed intelligent. So ends the scripture. Who here has a hard time concentrating? Raise your hand. Okay. Who feels like life is just filled with chaos and distractions at some point in time? Okay. I'm glad we're all on the same page. So I want you to take a moment and think about what really distracts you in life. And what is a distraction at its core? It's just something that doesn't allow you to focus in the moment. It doesn't allow you to be present, clear-minded, being able to see truth and reality, to speak, to listen, to think clearly. So take a moment, and I'll try to be quiet. Think about what really distracts you in life. Okay, I want to hear from y'all. What distracts you in life? What doesn't allow you to focus? Too many emails. emails. Television. Television. Deadlines. Deadlines. (laughs) Politics. Politics. Cell phone. Technology. Social media. Uh, Things we can't control. The past, the future, what my Nana liked to call what if land. Well, what if this happens, then will this happen, then this might happen, then this might happen, then this might happen, right? What else distracts us? The inner critic, the negative voice, right? The non-Jesus voice in our head. Money. Finances, cars, house, things we can't control, right? And here's where I feel like I might be pushing the line a little bit, but depending on what you're trying to focus on, family, relationships, your job, feeling self-worth, feeling understood, literally our bodies and our words, And so depending on what we're doing in life, our distractions can be anything. And they're always there. If you're anything like me, I'm very easily distracted. 
I have to have my routines. And it wasn't really until this week when I really started to dig into what my distractions were that I realized that a distraction is just something small. It's something that when I get home from a long day of work and I'm making dinner with Emily, and by making dinner, I mean she's cooking and I'm standing there trying not to mess it up, (laughs) one of our phones will go off, right? Even if we're not talking, if we're just kind of hanging out side by side in silence, one of our phones will go off. Usually it's mine. It's usually it's a sports update that doesn't really matter. But I rob myself of the ability to focus and concentrate on that moment because I don't know what's happened in her life yet. And so in that moment, that one small distraction might not seem huge, but it really is. And the more I thought about all the distractions we have in our lives, they come in simple, small moments But if we pile them all together, they recreate rhythms in our lives. And as I was thinking about this, I thought back to a study that some of my friends did at Duke when I was in graduate school there. And they worked together with some other med students that we had met at basketball games. And they made a list of the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual impact our distractions have. Okay? Now, granted, these are early 20-something-year-olds talking about their distractions and the actual impact it has on our body, okay? The fear of missing out. The comparison game. My life looks like this. My relationships look like this compared to everyone else's. Okay, think about how dangerous that becomes. Isolation. An inability to see what's true in life. An inability to see reality and what is real and what is not. Depression. Anxiety. Stress. Feeling overburdened. They came to find that our distractions actually raise our blood pressure. Make our hearts work more. We become more tired. Our distractions cause us to not be able to sleep well. Rest. Eat. Digest well. This part I cannot explain, but our distractions, mainly when it comes to technology and the negative thoughts in our head, actually rewire our brain. They rewire our brain, so that's the first thing we think about is that distraction. That's the first thing we reach for. It changes our chemical makeup. The things that should make us happy and make us joyful don't anymore. Because the distraction or the thing that we think makes us happy doesn't actually, but we lie to ourselves and our bodies change because of that. It changes the way that we understand love. Our distractions, they came to find, don't just impact our relationships, our ability to communicate and operate with one another. Our distractions literally rip at the core of who we are as humans at the soul level. Because at the end of the day, our distractions take away from our ability to love ourselves and most importantly, connect with God, our Christ, our creator, and our ever-present spirit. And so, yeah, the heater turning on maybe while Jen is talking to the kids is a small distraction. We laugh about it. The cell phone ringing in church, it distracts us a little. We laugh about it. But if we throw them all together and we look at actual data and research, it's rewiring who we are at the soul level. It's changing completely who God made us to be. And so this morning, I want us to not take our distractions lightly anymore, because I know I have. But if we look at the big picture, what is it doing to us as beloved children of God? That's why we need to fast from them. Not because I want to be able to have better conversations and not be distracted from my phone. Yeah, that's great. But it's changing me in here, deep down, physically, mentally, emotionally. But here's the hard next question. How do we fast from our distractions? How do we carve them out of our life? How do we begin to have routines in a brain, in a mind, in a body, in a soul that isn't distracted constantly? that's peaceful, calm, able to focus, see where God's at, pursue Jesus in every moment. 
that's a hard question to answer. And it's not as simple as like watch less TV or like put the cell phone in another room or don't wear my Apple watch as much because it's constantly going off. It's not as simple as saying, I need to focus better. It's not that simple. I really don't think that's enough because I've tried that in my life and a lot of research has shown that that isn't enough, right? Because it's something spiritual. Our distractions impact something spiritual. And so the same group of friends did another study after they found all these results and they looked at 10 different people who took 10 minutes of silence a day for one whole year and they wrote down all the positive things it did to them. Now, as I'm saying these positive impacts of silence, and as we as Christians understand it, prayer, communing with God, spiritual disciplines, think back to all the negative things that our distractions do to our bodies, our minds, and our souls. The benefits of silence are it increases mindfulness. It promotes self-awareness. It begins to rewire our brain, and it helps us understand and interpret and process things properly. It relaxes our body. It slows down our heart rate. We feel less stressed. It decreases anxiety and depression. It actually makes us feel less isolated. It changes our chemical makeup. It rewires and rebuilds our soul and our body for how it was made to be. So literally, it undoes everything that our distractions do. But the most important part that they found in this study was it increases love. Even though it it helps us think better, silence and meditation and prayer and our spiritual disciplines help us think better, and maybe we can have a better understanding of self, it increases love because what does silence do in our spiritual lives? It gives us the chance to feel God's presence and love. So yeah, go put your phone down this week. Go pray more. Go be silent more. It's going to help your body. It's going to help your mind. But more importantly, it's going to help you love and be present with God. Now, getting rid of our distractions and fasting from them is going to help our relationships, right? But I want our main goal this week to be, I'm going to be silent. I'm going to be still in my heart and in my soul and my mind and in my body. In situations when I usually get distracted, when I get ramped up, when somebody cuts me off on the interstate. Because in those situations, I want to be able to ask the question of, how is Jesus calling me to act? How can I love? So I want us to take a moment and be silent. And be still. And let go of your distractions. Let go of your stress. Let go of your worry, your to-do list, all the things that weigh you down. And simply feel God's love. Amen.
I'd invite us to join in a time of prayer and communion. I have a few joys and concerns to share with the congregation. First, I want to lift up prayers of comfort um, in a time of grief as Mary Ellen Huey's sister Alice passed away this week. So we offer our prayers of comfort and healing for their family. Also, Donna lifts up prayers for her brother-in-law, Dale, who has been diagnosed with wet macular degeneration in his left eye. Prayers for effectiveness of treatment for Dale and for um, Donna's sister as she, as she supports him through that. Also want to continue to lift up uh, those who are at war in our world, particularly in the Middle East. We pray comfort um, and strength uh, for Gaza and Israel and hearing the recent news this past week of over 30,000 dead in Gaza. Um, prayers, prayers for a ceasefire, for help. I also want to lift up just prayers of support for our teachers. I'm not sure if everyone knows that the teachers of PUSD have been in negotiation um, perhaps the entire year. Uh, with the administration and things aren't going, moving toward reconciliation and resolution well. So prayers for our teachers, for the hard work that they do, and prayers for all of our students as well, that they would persevere throughout this year. I'd invite us to just hold those prayers and the prayers that are within our own hearts, knowing that as we come to the communion table, we come exactly as we are, with all of our joys, with all of our concerns, to be nourished and fed by the Spirit of Christ. Let's join together in Holy Communion, and your words will be sung. The words are uh, on the screen. The Lord be with you. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give you thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. Before you had formed the earth, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God, the one from whom all things come into being. You created light out of the darkness and brought forth life on earth. You formed humanity in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. Even when we turned away, your steadfast love remained true. Again and again, you reminded us of our belovedness and sent prophets to help us reclaim our purpose on earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
blessed is Jesus Christ, in whom you revealed yourself in your way. Your spirit anointed him to bring good news to the poor, to bind up broken hearts, and bring freedom to every captive heart. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This cup represents a new covenant of unending forgiveness for all. As often as you drink this cup, remember me. And so in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Fill this moment with your presence and nourish our spirits with your grace so that we might be your presence and grace in the world. Amen. For those of you who are worshiping online, we'd invite you now to take bread and juice, whatever common elements you have gathered, knowing that you are in communion with Christ and this congregation. Here in the sanctuary, we want to remind you that this table is not the table of the United Methodist Church or any church. This is Christ's table, where simple elements of bread and juice convey his extraordinary love. All are welcome to come and receive. The ushers will guide you forward, and please just come, take the bread and the juice. You can place your juice cups in the baskets on either side, and there is also gluten-free bread at the center of each plate for those who need that. Come, all is ready and all are welcome. hard to break the silence with announcements, but that's what we're going to do, ways to grow 
and continue to be inspired by our faith. I want to remind you that um, our Lenten spiritual formation groups are meeting in the library after worship. It doesn't matter if you haven't come before, you can come and reflect a little bit about how the Lenten journey is going and then have some discussion about today's scripture and sermon. We also have some uh, special opportunities to give in addition to our regular offerings that support the ministries of this church, we have two special offerings this month. Um, one is that throughout the month we'll be collecting to support the United Methodist Committee on Relief. Next Sunday is called One Great Hour of Sharing, and that collection supports all of the overhead for that ministry so that when we give to a particular disaster at any time throughout the year, 100% of those funds go to support that disaster. So that's how we pay for, um, for the work of our disaster relief funds. We also have an opportunity to give our glasses away to help those who may not be able to purchase glasses themselves. We'll be collecting those glasses um, for the Lions throughout the month. Also, um, upcoming opportunities to support and care within our congregation. Ken Solomon's memorial will be March 16th at 2 o'clock, and Phil Cooper's memorial March 23rd at 11. Last announcement is just, just a reminder that we have youth group today, 4 to 5 for middle school, 5 to 6 for high school. We're going to invite you to stand for our closing hymn. May we find better ways to fast and ignore our distractions by seeking silence and embracing the peaceful, silent moments in our life because that's where God is and God will show us God's love. Amen. <laughs>